Ahoy! Today I'm in the Serial Time studios with Charlie and Jimmy. Hi. And Hello. we just filmed an episode which will be up so yeah. you guys can watch it. Really fun one. Link I loved to it. it in the description if you like Dutch things. We went full go Dutch. And watch it. <laughs> we did go full on Dutch. <laughs> yeah. But it was we did so really much badly. Fun. Yeah. It was so much fun. <laughs> Today on my channel we're doing something a bit more book related. I have gathered 10 true or false author facts. Uh, okay. So it's up to Jimmy and Charlie to figure out if they are true or if they are false. We have buzzers. You want to try the buzzers? Excellent. I love having buzzers. Basically, I will read out the fact and who buzzes first gets to answer. I'm going to be okay. so bad at this. Okay. All right. These are all sort of like classic authors, but you might not know any of these facts about them. I tried to pick okay. some obscure ones. Okay. Look, guys, the YouTubers didn't know any of need these. an education. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You ready? Edgar Allan Poe often wrote with a raven on his shoulder. False. That is correct, false. Is it that he had a raven on his writing desk? He did not. Oh. <laughs> he instead had a cat on his shoulder. He had oh. a family cat that often used to sit on his shoulder when he was writing. Really? Yeah. That's adorable. Jane Austen sold the rights to Pride and Prejudice to her publisher for only five pounds at the time. True. Ooh. But I'm going to say that five pounds was probably a fair amount of money at the time. Well, it's true that it was more money at the time. Yeah. She did not sell it for five pounds, fortunately. Oh, she sold it false. for a hundred and ten pounds, which still was not enough. She'd have sold it for more. Yeah. But she didn't want to be too closely related to the book because women at the time shouldn't have been writing, obviously. I wonder how much money they made from that deal. J.K. Rowling has said that the last word in the Harry Potter series was originally supposed to be scar. Scar? The last word of the Harry Potter series. Uh, yes, she did say that. She did. Okay, good. Good work. <laughs> I don't know why I knew that, but I did. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, author of the Sherlock Holmes stories, helped to make skiing popular in the 1890s. <laughs> True. True. Really? Yeah. Good work. What? A quote from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle himself. You let yourself go, he said, getting as near to flying as any earthbound man can. In that glorious air, it is a delightful experience. It is delightful, actually. I love skiing. I've never done it, but I haven't read much Sherlock Holmes either, so clearly. i tell you what's quite interesting, actually. If you search for Victorian skiers, women would wear, like, a full-length skirt, obviously, yep. right down to the ankle, and guys would just wear, like, a tweed suit. All right, next one, we're going Shakespeare, okay. because it is the 400th year celebration of Shakespeare passing away this month, so it's Shakespeare month. And did you know that Shakespeare did not only write plays, he also performed in them, and he once performed the role of one of the witches in Macbeth. No, he didn't do that. I think it might be true. He did not perform as a witch. He did perform as the ghost in Hamlet. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, but do I get that then? Yes, you get the point. Okay. <laughs> oh, tenuous. <laughs> he was still an actor, but okay. he did not play one of the witches. Yeah, I had heard that. All right. yeah. Although most female roles were played by men, so it's not too far-fetched, to be honest. Yeah, I had heard that as well. Mm, yeah, no women on stage. Women are just not allowed to do anything. No. Bad times. <laughs> Lewis Carroll author of Alice in Wonderland, actually also wrote 11 books on mathematics. True. True. Yeah, it's true. Good work, yeah. So yeah. Really I'm pretty sure he was a mathematician. Next Lewis Carroll fact is, he would also sometimes write letters in sort of mirror image so that the people who got the letter would have to use a mirror to read it. Oh, that is true. It is also true. I, I remember hearing that on a Radio 4 documentary about Lewis Carroll. Mm. Other people who also did this, Leonardo da Vinci in his notebooks, mm. because he was scared people were going to read over his shoulder. While doing research for The Martian, author Andy Weir experimented growing potatoes in the same way that Mark Watney does in the book. He did it in a lab that he built in his backyard in Arizona. I could be wrong, but I don't think that he did that. He didn't do that. Okay, good. <laughs> it is a really good book, though. Yeah, it the is, movie as well. Wasn't it written as a series of short stories that he published online and then they became a thing? I know it was self-published, but I don't know if it was short stories. I don't know, maybe that could be yeah. completely... You're confused with Arthur Conan Doyle. We're going back in time. Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein as part of a ghost story competition with her friends while they were stuck inside because of bad weather. That is true. It is true. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are doing well. Yeah, no, I knew that. Some of them have been guesses, I'll be honest. <laughs> that one, I did know. All right, we're on the last one. Okay. okay. Do we know what the score is at the moment? Yeah, Josh, what's the score so uh, far? It's actually a tie. It's 4-4. Four, four. <gasps> Amazing. Oh, all right, all right. You guys ready? Emily Dickinson's gravestone in Massachusetts has the following words on it, composed by the poet herself. Are friends delight or pain? I think we're both playing the long game, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. True. 
Mm -mm. Oh. Oh, not correct. So it actually says cold back, which is quite interesting, but it's apparently based on like the title of her favorite book. Mm -hmm. Getting called back to the other world. Yeah. I like that. I think we all learned a lot today. Lots yeah. of weird author facts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that was great. I think Good to use on dates or random trivia at parties. All right, well, thank you very much for playing. I hope thank you, you enjoyed so it. Thank I you. did. Don't forget to go check out the Serial Time episode, which will be linked in the description. Yes. And of course, subscribe to Serial Time. Now, all that is left is to say goodbye in Dutch. Doei! Doei!